Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. I'm often asked when a viewer is about to purchase their first or a new polisher, which one to get. What's the difference between available polishers? This video should shed some light on that today. We have four polishers available for this video. The first one's going to be an 8mm throw on a Grios Garage G9 polisher. This is what I would consider an entry-level polisher. But what do I mean by throw? 8mm uh, is going to be the oscillation or the throw of the back plate from side to side and it's a dual action polisher so it will also spin because of that oscillation and I'm going to show you that by putting some marks on this brand new pad here some differences between these polishers are going to be slight some are going to be rather impressive what we're going to do is put the pad up against a pane of glass and i'll show you what the oscillation and rotation will give you from an entry level eight millimeter throw polisher the rotation on this backing plate and pad is not forced. It's the result of the oscillation from the polisher. There are forced rotation polishers out there. We'll discuss those towards the end of the video. But as you can see with the marks, the kind of work you'll be able to do. Let's switch over to something slightly more aggressive. This has a 15 millimeter throw. This is the ShineMate EX610. Putting this up against the pane, you'll see the throw or the oscillation is just a little bit larger. We still do get some rotation. You'll notice if I put pressure on the pane of glass, the rotation stops. So it's not a true um, forced rotation once again. Let's move on to a 21 millimeter throw. We'll put that up against the glass and you'll see the area of work will grow even larger because of the throw or the oscillation. And again, this will spin because of the oscillation as well. This polisher here is from the Grios Garage Boss system. This is the 21 millimeter. And finally, one of my favorite polishers, the rotary polisher, and they come in all shapes, sizes. The pad and backing plate is forced rotation. There is no oscillation. So as you can see, it just spins, but at a high rate of speed. There are other slight differences, and I can demonstrate that on this test panel here, which is slightly hazed over with some sand marks. We have it divided into four areas, and each area will be designated to the 8, 15, 21 millimeter throw and the rotary. Let's start with the first section here and grab the Grios Garage G6. I wrongly mentioned earlier it was a G9. This is the early model G6. We'll hold it against the panel for 15 seconds or so with the pressure I would apply if I was correcting. We'll pull the polisher away and we'll take a measurement of the temperature on the panel. And you'll see as we switch from one polisher to another, that temperature is gonna change. It's gonna spike with uh, polishers that have more aggressive throws because we're transferring more energy, energy from the polisher to the panel, if that makes sense. As you can see here, this panel went from 60 degrees to about 72, uh, you know, not a huge jump. And that's why these entry level polishers are made the way they are. They're safer for those that are just starting out. We're going to wipe off the residue and also do a width measurement of the work area that these polishers can produce. As you can see here, it did correction. Uh, it may take a little bit longer with these polishers, but the work can be completed. So as you can see here, this polisher can correct a swath about six and a half inches wide. Let's write down this information and move on to the next section. Let's grab the polisher with the 15 millimeter throw.
And you'll notice right away temperature spiking just a bit higher, over 100 degrees now. And the width of a path that this polisher can make correcting a panel is about seven and a quarter inches. I believe you're going to be able to see the pattern that we are in moving from one polisher to another. We'll write down this information and move on to the section where we grab the 21 millimeter throw. And you'll notice here temperatures spike even higher and that has nothing to do with the pressure or the speed of the polisher or the pad choice or the correction fluid. It's because more work is being done. More energy is being transferred from the polisher to the panel. You'll be able to work quicker and be more efficient with a polisher like this, especially if you're working on larger vehicles, boats, RVs, vans. And you'll be able to carve out a path just under 8 inches on those larger vehicles. And now let's grab the rotary polisher. Dropping quickly because the shop is rather cool, but it was around 104, 105 degrees. So it's up there, but not the highest out of all the test areas. Let's wipe off the residue and measure the correction area. The rotary can be a bit tricky to gauge because it is skill dependent as to who's operating it. Uh, I can get work done quickly with it, correcting, uh, cutting, and finishing with the rotary. And it's just a great all-around tool. I recommend it uh, as a scalpel in your arsenal. Um, those just learning, it may take some time, but don't give up. The 21 millimeter throw, if you're working on a large vehicle, should be the most popular one. And also, if you're just starting out, that 8 millimeter throw, just like the Grios Garage G6, is a great way to start. So I hope that helps you with your search for your first or new polisher. Some of the differences are subtle. Some are rather impressive. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Brian from Apex Detail. I'll catch you in the next video.